when it comes to machining materials on my CNC machine, I'd rather cut steel than aluminium. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today I've got a wee project I want to cut out of this block of aluminium. Me and aluminium have never really got along. I've never had a lot of luck machining it and generally avoid it like the plague. I end up with chatter on my cutting. I end up with aluminium chips welded to the flutes of the cutter. I end up with broken cutters. I end up with aluminium chips going everywhere. I've got problems if I use a lubricant. I've got to make sure lubricant doesn't get onto my tabletop surface. And just the whole raft of things. I really hate machining aluminium. The proper tool to use for that is, of course, a mill. I don't have one of those, so I'm going to use what I've got. Now, I know you can machine aluminium on a machine like mine. Other people have done it. I've seen videos of people using smaller, less rigid machines than mine, also cutting aluminium, and they get good results. So the good news is, it's not the machine, it's me. So, with a bit of education, I should be able to get this sorted. At the very least, I'll end up with a video entitled, How Not to Cut Aluminium. So, let's have a look at my table and the issues I perceive I'm going to have and what I'm going to do about it. Well, it's probably fair to say that the brain's been working overtime on uh, what I should perhaps do to secure the aluminium block to the table and protect the tabletop. So the first thing I did is I constructed this box here. And it's simply made out of some uh, MDF, some half-inch sides, and some uh, three-quarter on the bottom here. This is melamine, so that if I do lose, use a, a uh, cutting fluid, then it shouldn't uh, penetrate into the melamine coating here. It's protected by this plastic. Now, the plastic sheeting goes in between the base and the sides, so it won't get onto the sides here. Then it goes over and protects the sides of my tabletop as well. The front here just comes off the end, so any chips I can just, they can go onto the floor for all I care. I, I'm not worried about those, or I can contain them as I need. If I have to, I can uh, put these sides up higher as well by putting something in behind here. Now this here is bolted down to the tabletop. You can see these fixing uh, wing nuts here and here. And uh, there's another two that you won't be able to see just there. They're going into the T-slots on the tabletop. So that's held down nice and rigid. Now I've surrounded the aluminium piece here with some strips of plywood. And then I'm going to take another piece of plywood here. And I'm going to screw that down as well. So that'll hold it in place. It won't be able to lift up once I've done that. There's a screw here at the front that will stop it coming forward this way here. It pushes it hard into there. This should not be moving anywhere, so that's going to take care of that. I'm only interested in the first two inches of this block here, so uh, they're not going to interfere with anything. Now, in the past, I've also used small cutters for projects. In this time, I'm going to use a solid carbide quarter inch bit and this is a three flute bit I don't know whether that's a good option or not maybe I'm better off with one or two flute but I'm going to try three flute to start with um, I think it should work out okay when it comes to lubrication I'm going to try some CRC CDT it uh, stands for uh, cutting drilling and tapping as a um, an oil-like uh, substance that you can brush on to the aluminium. I don't want to go uh, squirting um, thin fluids over the place because the air, the air of the spindle might throw it around. The cutter will probably pick it up and throw it around. So um, I'm thinking this stuff might be a little bit better. It's made for uh, use with hand tools. It's meant to give uh, a good finish on, on projects. So I'm going to give that a go and see what it comes out like. So I'm starting by just brushing on 
some of this oil-based lubricant onto the material. It's quite a thick oil-like substance, so hopefully it won't be splashed around by the cutter. And the amount of air coming out of my spindle is very, very minimal. So we'll see what happens, and uh, we will adapt our strategy as we proceed. So I've already zeroed it to the surface of the material here. So let's see what happens. For the final pass, I used lubrication on the surface of the aluminium. I'm taking a very shallow cut at 0.1 of a millimetre or 4 thousandth of an inch. And my step over was reduced to 10% to try and get the best possible finish. Well that's come up looking pretty nice. It, uh, I, mean, I can definitely see the machining marks in it, but it's nice and smooth uh, to the touch and is more than adequate for what I want. Maybe even just a very, very fine sanding just to, to remove those machining marks just to make it look pretty, but that doesn't really matter. Now I can see I haven't machined the top piece here properly. I can see the step over was way too much. The finishing tool path I used here was very, very fine to try and give me a, a good finish. And I forgot to do that on the top. And I also didn't machine an area big enough here because there's a piece of unmachined material there. So I need to run a new tool path on here just to finish that off, make it look a little bit smoother, but also to get rid of this little upstand because I didn't make it prop the file properly. The cutter is barely touching the surface of the material here, but it does remove the lip. I then start machining the next step down. On this pass I experimented with raster cutting rather than spiral, but I found it worked better with a spiral cut. I also took the opportunity to test different feeds and speeds to see what I thought worked best with my machine. So at the completion of this toolpath I've come to the conclusion that conventional cutting is better than climb cutting, that uh, 30 inches a minute 8,000 RPM seems to work quite well on my machine and I'm taking one millimeter bytes, that's 40,000 uh, per pass. So it takes me three passes to get down to each step. So I've now got two more steps to do. I'm gonna uh, get them started and uh, get this bit machined. So I'm down to machining the final step and all was proceeding well until this happened. Well that's quite annoying, that sounds like it just galled up with aluminium. And yes I can see it all stuck into the flutes there. Well that's highly uh, annoying. A lot of people use coated cutters for this. I, I don't have any unfortunately. After cleaning out the flutes, I restarted the cuts and had no more problems machining the part. Well that basically looks like what I drew, which is always a good sign. Uh, now I need to engrave some uh, numbers in here because of course I haven't made life hard enough for myself as it is. 
I've installed a 90 degree solid carbide V-bit into the spindle and I'm just going to add a dab of cutting fluid into each location where a number is going to be engraved. Now I have to admit that I'm definitely not a fan of machining aluminium on this machine at all. However, when it comes to engraving on it, I could do this all day long without any problems at all. And there it is, the finished result, and it came out just perfectly, exactly as I wanted it to. The numbering came out even better than I'd hoped. I'm absolutely stoked with it, and I can see myself doing some more engraving in aluminium in the future. As for machining the rest of it, realistically the real tool for doing this is a proper milling machine, which has the ability to flood it with coolant as it's doing it. I certainly won't be going out of my way to do any more of this in the future on this machine, not if I can help it anyway. So, the question is, what is it? Well, for that, you're going to have to wait for the next episode when I'll be showing you what it is and how to use it. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my website, www.cncnuts.com. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.